Hey there Wargamers and welcome back to another Wargames Delivered video. In this video, we're going to be painting Beast from the X-Band, finishing our video from last week. Let's get started. Alright, so for this video I wanted to go over uh, how I paint my characters after I use an airbrush first, uh, like we did in our last video, uh, to base the miniatures. So to start off, we're going to get a nice mixture of... Uh, Pretty much every tone that we have uh, on the model, everything that we made with the airbrush to start them off is what we're going to want to make on our palette here, just so we have every version of the color to bounce back and forth to. Uh, as you can see, we're going to start with the uh, darkest one here. A little bit of black goes a long way, um, and we're going to mix this until we have about the same color that we had to uh, base him with the, with the airbrush, with the air paints. Um, so as you can see, we've got a nice darker blue here, and with this, we are pretty much just looking to cover all of the recesses in the model. So uh, all of the definition in his abs and on his arms and his legs. I uh, figured this would be a great model to kind of show that off on. Um, and you will kind of notice this more on the areas that are a little bit more highlighted. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do this on uh, like some of the lower parts of the feet and stuff, but I always do anyway just to kind of blend everything together here and see as you can see we're just kind of following the lines across the model here um, you can do this with a wash if you'd like to uh, but it's not absolutely necessary I prefer to do it with just a, a thin down acrylic just because I feel like I have a little bit more control of my brush and the paint there um, so yeah this is the uh, entire step here is we're going to follow all of the uh, recessed areas of the model with uh, this darker color here, just to add a little bit more shading to the, to the model. And as you can see here, that added a nice level of detail and depth to our model here, uh, really tying together the shadows. And now we're gonna move on to just uh, pure matte black. And with this, we're going to cover uh, his outfit, I guess you could call it, his, uh, his pair of underwear that he's wearing here. Um, leaving uh, the belt blue for now, we're going to go ahead and cover that with a yellow a little bit later on. So for now, we're just going to cover the entirety of his, uh, his little underwear here, I guess, uh, or his, his X-Men outfit, I guess I should call it, um, in the matte black. You may need two, uh, two coats of this, just be very careful around the blue that we've already done. Um, we essentially use the airbrush uh, and that um, uh, shading technique to create uh, the entirety of the skin for the model. We shouldn't really have to go back in and cover up any of the, the blue uh, or redo any of the skin or the fur. Um, I'm not sure what you would call it on, on Beast. I'll get back to you guys on that one. But uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and be very careful around these areas uh, that we've already done with the blue and keep at it here and we'll move on to the next stage and as you can see here i also dotted each of the eyes a little bit with black in uh sort of the corners of the eyes uh, this will just help us add a little bit of definition later on and now we'll move on to some smaller details here we're going to go ahead and do abomination gore for the uh, inner x-men symbol you can kind of see it on the card up there in the corner um, it's okay if you're a little bit messy with this. This is the beginning stage of our belt, so actually feel free to be messy at this stage. We're going to be covering up all of the uh, black and yellow uh, pieces afterwards. So just get a nice even coat across uh, all of the interior uh, inner shadows of the um, X symbol, and we'll move on from there. And from there, we will start moving on to uh, one of the most difficult colors to paint in the hobby here, and that's gonna be yellow. Uh, so for this, we're going on a blue. Um, it can tend to look a little bit green if you do it like this. Uh, so my best recommendation for painting yellow, uh, especially over a darker color like blue or black or anything like that, is going to be use very thin coats, take a lot of time to do this, and it's just like painting white. Like it'll. It'll take a lot of time to get there, and you may actually want to use maybe like a light gray to cover it first before you uh, before you do this. Um, but you can do it just straight from blue to yellow, it just takes a little bit of time. So just keep that in mind when you're working on this area. Uh, try not to work over it while it's still drying, that can also um, lead to some 
chunky textured areas on uh, on some pieces that you don't want so just be mindful of that and we'll keep it this I added about uh, five very thin layers of the yellow to this uh, so that's about what it takes uh, to get the color that you're looking for here and while I'm working on uh, areas like this that have a lot of the blue next to it where it's easy to mess up I like to have a, a damp brush and a dry brush next to me just to wipe away any of that color uh, if I accidentally make a mistake on the the fur or the skin here of the model um, so just keep that in mind whenever you're working on a project like this or an area like this where you're trying to be very careful just make sure you have a nice uh, semi damp brush and then also a dry brush as well just to wipe away any of that excess color that, that might get onto the model. You can absolutely take a wet brush and wipe away uh, paint if it's still kind of wet. So keep that in mind as well. And we'll move on from there to our uh, next step here, which is going to be adding matte black to the X symbol on the X-Men uh, belt here that he has. So we'll go ahead and just take our regular matte black, try to get that through the palette there. And we're going to cover the entirety of the symbol, being very careful around the yellow and the red that we did earlier. And you could work on this uh, when we painted the uh, sort of underwear pants situation that we did earlier with the matte black, but I find it easier to uh, work from the deepest part of the model upwards uh, so for instance here the X symbol is the highest raise area on the model so it's just easier to hit that last and as you can see the uh, yellow on the belt is a little bit uneven so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up a little bit with some yellow off screen and then we'll also take some dark tone here to kind of marry the two colors together between his waist and the belt so we'll just line this right across the top of the belt and the bottom as well. Uh, be very careful around the blue and the yellow. We don't want to get this directly on the uh, outward facing part of the belt. Just keep that in mind and uh, just have your brush flow against the uh, middle of the model there. As you can see on the belt, it looks a little bit better, but there's some parts that are still a bit even. I'll probably have to go in and clean that up. Uh, some other time. For now, uh, I think the belt's acceptable for me, so we'll move on to some of the smaller details on the face. Uh, for now, we're going to start out with the eyes, and these are going to start out as ash gray, and we're going to build up our way uh, to white here. So be very careful here. Uh, use very thinned out paint, and be sure to wipe off any excess on your brush. This will help from your paint from kind of going everywhere, and you can have a lot more control this way. So uh, just kind of dot the eyes. Um, we sort of put the black in there in the beginning to kind of use those as placeholders for where uh, the gray and the white should go eventually. So keep that in mind. Um, it's always a little bit easier to have a model looking somewhere than straight ahead. So whenever you're doing eyes, keep that in mind. These Marvel United figures are perfect for practicing eyes because their heads are a little bit bigger than most of your, uh, most of your models. So. Um, if you can pick up some of these, that would be great. We also have some uh, fantastic larger models in the Malifaux section on our store that would be uh, a great uh, practicing tool for this as well. Uh, so yeah, that's my, that's my spiel on eyes. And it takes some time. Uh, eyes are a bit of a process and it takes a little back and forth until you really get them how you want them. Just kind of uh, keep going at it until you have a good look on your model and uh, just always remember good control on your brush and thin paints will get you there. Just takes a couple coats usually. Now we're going to move on to some uh, some detail in the mouth here with some abomination gore and we're just going to line the inside of the mouth for now and we will come back to the teeth later on. So just get every recess in the mouth here and we will come back and shade this and add the color of the teeth later on. Looks like I accidentally missed a close-up there, so I apologize for that, guys. But now we're going to switch over uh, to some matte white. And we are going to finish off our eyes here while the mouth is drying. 
And for this, you want to very carefully just dot the areas that we did with ash gray earlier. Ash gray is essentially our color by number for the eyes here. So everything that's covered in ash gray on the eyes, we want covered in matte white. If you leave a little bit poking through, that's actually okay. It adds a little bit of a transition to the eyes here. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're working on eyes. Uh, it's always best to work up from white uh, from a darker color. So if we have blue here, uh, we're working ash gray to matte white. And the same process with the ash gray, we're just very lightly dotting the eyes in uh, what we would consider the pupils, I would guess. Uh, and we'll just keep doing this back and forth until we have a nice even coat on the eyes. And again, eyes are always a bit of a balancing act, so just keep that in mind. Uh, be patient with it, and it takes time to really get the look that you're going for on your model. Uh, but once you've got that finished up, we're going to switch over to Drake Tooth, and this is going to be color the color of the teeth on our model. So we're going to very carefully line all of the teeth here with this color, uh, being very careful around the blue of the model and the uh, red that we put in the mouth earlier. And once you finish that off, there's really only one more step on the model, and that is to add a little bit of definition into the mouth. So we'll take a little bit of dark tone. Uh, we don't want a super heavy wash just because we want to keep the color of the teeth. So just be very careful here. Add a little bit of shading into the mouth. Um, we want some definition up in uh, behind his teeth and uh, around his tongue there. And just try to wipe off as much as you can on the teeth uh, you can have a little bit of definition there, but we don't really want his teeth to look uh, dirty, I guess. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out the top link in the description for the giveaway that's attached to the video. And happy wargaming, guys.